It's time to wind down, time to wise up, discussing life, exploring the word, gaining wisdom with encouraging words. It's time for Tea with Tiff. Well, good evening and welcome to <laughs> Tea Time with Tiff. I'm your host, Dr. Tiffany Henderson, and I am super elated, excited to be here. I get this from her. She says that all the time. <laughs> I am happy to see all of, I have, as you can see, I have really, really, really beautiful, excellent, amazing, godly women <laughs> who are here. Um, I can say that because I know them all. These are women who really uh, are seeking to please God with their lives. In every aspect, we're going to talk about what that looks like. Um, so before I go another further, as my grandmother says, um, I want them to introduce themselves. I'll start with this young lady on the end. So give us your name and something unique about yourself. Okay. Well, my name is Kiera, and something unique. Um, I have a YouTube channel. Um, it's called The Undoing, and yeah. What is The Undoing? Um, the Undoing <laughs> is just about freedom in Christ. So I like sing on there. Preach on there sometimes, and I talk about freedom in Christ. <clears throat> um, so my name is Rosie. I am a worship leader here at the Kingdom Advancement Center. Almost got to say the KAC Kingdom Advancement Center. <laughs> um, I guess another interesting thing is I'm half Bahamian. <laughs> it's interesting. It's interesting. <laughs> Hello all, I am Minister Nikki, and I am um, the children's ministry pastor here at the KAC. That's what's unique. Ah, unique, that's right. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> We're going with okay. That's what I'm going with. There's so many other unique I'm a spoken word artist. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, awesome. so good too. I'm doing it over. Hi, I'm Minister Nikki. I'm a spoken <laughs> word artist, and I'm also the children's ministry pastor here at the Kingdom Advancement Center. And she both. And I like hot weather. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, I'm Ruby. Um, I am an artist, so that's what's unique about me. She creates murals, like, and she draws Disney characters, and she does like she can draw anything. It's quite amazing. Yes, you can see her work here at the KC. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Kelly. Um, I'm from the UK. Uh, I, no, really. Um, <laughs> my name is Kelly, um, but I am born and raised in the Chicagoland area, and something unique about me is, of course, I love accents. Yes. Can you, can you, can you show us your, uh, uh, what's the other accent you like to do? Your portfolio, let's see. Yeah. This is something else. Irish? Uh, I forgot. No, she doesn't know. What's the other yeah. Jamaican? So I I also do the uh, uh, African that uh, you know. Sometimes I can be from Nigeria, or <laughs> sometimes you know I like to you know give the people something to think about. You know when they say <laughs> where are you from? I want to. Kind of guess and may not be sure where I am from, <laughs> uh, you know, and switch it up at any time so that they are not sure what mm -hmm. accent they are going to get when they speak to me. Hello, everyone. You guys are great. I mean, just <laughs> even even with that, I love that you all are unique. And that you all have all the different things that you are doing and that you have going in your lives. Um, and of course, one of the things that is the same is that you all love Jesus, and yeah. which is why you're here. And I'm excited about that because I don't really get down with people who. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. I know I like Jesus, you know. <laughs> but you can't like be in my circles right now. Oh, have they? Tea, yeah, or have tea. <laughs> but um, so anyway, so I'm excited about that. So this particular episode, um, I titled it "Single, Saved, and the Struggle," because what I found um, in speaking with you and other people um, that is it's 
It's struggle bus city mm-hmm. out here. <laughs> struggle bus city. <laughs> struggle bus. Like, I mean, it, uh, on these here streets, mm-hmm. trying to be saved. Come on, listen. With the, the streets, yeah. Listen, yeah. with the folks that we got out here, mm-hmm. it, it, I, I see it ain't good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, and, and I here. see that it's, yes. it's hard out here for a saint. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When you're trying to live your life for the Lord and they ain't. Yeah. It's, it's, it's hard out here. <laughs> Try to get this money for the ring. Cadillac gas. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it be a whole lot of things jumping shit. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Come on. make sure that we follow the Lord um, but define what that means though to be in the struggle right now 2020 COVID-19 you know Black Lives Matter all, I mean it's a lot of stuff happening what is the struggle like for you in 2020 well for me like I'm in college everybody just have their hot girl summer they hook up with who they want and so trying to stay saved, like in the middle of that, like it's hard out here for a saved little Christian. <laughs> it's hard out here, number one. And number two, like in my in my age range, you just get the I'm not ready for a relationship, but I still kind of want to be connected to you, but we're still young, so I don't really want to be serious. And it's just it's a mess. It's a mess. Um, for me, in my experience, um, I still maintain that I have an equal opportunity to hear, meaning that I date of all colors. Um, but in, like, since you mentioned the Black Lives Matter, in this political or social climate, I feel like you have to be even more vigilant, I guess, with your dating because you don't know people's intentions. There's so much that's coming out now. That, that wouldn't have come out before, it was kind of hidden, or people weren't as bold as they were before. So that is a struggle, um, and just that it's such a small pool of Oh, <laughs> 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 small. A kiddie pool. It is! It's, it's shallow! <laughs> it's literally like shallow. a foot tub. It's like yeah. a foot tub of people. Mm-hmm. So wow. that's, that's, that's a lot of my struggle. I'm gonna get off my soap. <laughs> I'm, I'm on the same one. So, right, right. We're waiting in the water together, girl. Yes, I would say part of the struggle that um, I could speak on is again being hopeful, staying connected to the promises of God. Um, because it, it looks like the unsaved folk and the, the casual Christians are winning. Mm. Mm. Like, you know, they kind of, kind of go to church, kind of, sort of. Yep. They kind of, sort of like Jesus. He all right with me. He my whole boy. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, yeah, we're going to live together and have sex because we're saving up for a wedding. Mm. Marriage license costs $65. Right. You know, so Mm. it's that 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 we're competing, almost competing against and trying to... um, live for Christ like for real mm. so many different definitions now <clears throat> so just staying connected and hopeful to the promises of God mm-hmm. yeah definitely it's real dry out here you know? <laughs> uh, but I agree with that too it's just uh, staying hopeful and not being in fear trusting the Lord trusting in his timing um, just just Trust, really. Mm-hmm. It just really boils down to trusting him, um, that he knows your heart's desires because he put him there. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I've definitely paid my fare on the struggle bus. No, I had a tip. <laughs> right, and had a transfer. <laughs> no, for real. Um, but just again, you know, the identity. I think, I think that's the struggle, right? I mean, I think Rosie, you kind of alluded to it. There's so much out here. There's so many different types of people that 
you know, maybe in times past, you wouldn't have necessarily come across in the dating. But if you go out with someone, you meet someone, you really don't know who you're meeting, you're meeting their representative and they're sizing you up to drop the bomb that, hey, yes. maybe I'm, you know, same sex attracted or maybe I'm bisexual uh, or mm. maybe I'm into, you know, some sort of alternative lifestyle relationship ship situation. <laughs> and mm -hmm. it's like, I just want a regular dude. <laughs> Just, you know, all that extra. not really interested in all of that, you know, I just want to go on a date and meet a regular guy, you know, so it, it, you have to really be strong in who yeah. you are in Christ yes. and who and what God has made you. So mm -hmm. trying to stay true to that is just when there's a, a you know, 31 flavors of variety <laughs> out here is just. Is, is yeah. a struggle. Yeah. 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 yeah, and she reminded me too, again, you know, um, in agreement with uh, the representative, you know, person and then making the choice that you're not going to settle and, you know, asking God for that discernment to mm -hmm. recognize the red flags, you know, so that there's no uh, wasting time. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. time is precious. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I heard a, um, I heard a pastor say, he said, um, the name of this message, I still remember, the name of the message was called The Courage to Face It. Um, this is by uh, Bishop Joseph Warren Walker III. He was my pastor when I was in college. And he said, it's easy to trust God when you don't have no prospects. Hmm. Oh. And he said, but oh, it's difficult. Like, it, it becomes a whole different situation. When you got somebody that's right up next to you trying to get with you, that you know the Lord ain't <laughs> for you. So it's easy to talk about, oh, I trust the Lord, but you have no prospects. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. But how does that change, though, when you do get prospects? Like, you're like, well, Lord, you know, <laughs> what had happened was, no, yeah. like, how real is that, though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true, and it's like, just, it kind of goes back to what you said about the casual Christian, like, this whole in-between kind of go to church, don't really have a relationship with God, I'm not accountable to nobody, like, do you have a mentor, a pastor, somebody, <laughs> do you have anybody, like, it's just, this whole in-between, you know, just not really living life for Jesus, but showing up on Sunday, like, we're just not, we're not doing that, but it's, it's hard when you're just in this culture where, Everybody, it seems like they do that and they win. Or you know what I mean? It seems like they do that and they're happy and they live with they boo. And you and Kyla <laughs> try to be saved, go to church all Sunday. And they they live in their little apartment together. Listen, <laughs> we got some here. We 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 Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yes. You know, if you're gonna get tripped up every time you see somebody in a little boot shacking up, living a life, then it's a wrap. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, come on. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah. She, she wrapped that up for y'all. Like, nice she wrapped little it. package with the bow. Because I think the misconception is that we're sitting here and we're talking about being single, but we get approached. Mm, we right. get we get approached. We get look. We get all of that. Oh, okay. Okay. It's the matter of nah. who's who's for it? <laughs> it's like, but it's your your a stranger's voice that shall not follow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Father's <laughs> voice. A yes, yes, you know. Yeah. And so it's that struggle, that struggle of it's not that you know the, when we say the the when you say the the pool is small. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Super small. Of godly men. Mm. Like there's men in there. Yeah. yeah. Like everybody can go to the pool. Mm -hmm. So speaking of that, let's 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 get to this because we're we we're talking. I want to get into this good man versus godly man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, my husband likes to talk about this all the time. Like you know, it's easy to get a good man. Yeah, yeah, Because you know, there are some good men out of here yeah. who they go to work every day. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good you know, job. They yeah. they 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 come to church. You know, frequently. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, are they really trying to figure out how to seek the Lord and live on purpose for live out His purpose for right. their lives? 
Probably not. Right. But they they gonna treat you all right. They gonna right. be okay. Yeah. Like, you know, they're not gonna completely like they're not gonna harm you, mm -hmm. but they're yeah. not necessarily going to propel you into yes. the real destiny mm -hmm. God has for you though. Yes. Right? And so the question you have to ask yourself is, are you okay with that good man? Or do you want a godly man? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's the real question you gotta ask yourself. And that's a hard question to answer. Mm -hmm. Because you can get caught up in the trappings of, like you said, he's a good man, he comes home, he pays the bills, he fills your refrigerator with groceries. <laughs> he does, you know, all those good things that, you know, your mama or your grandmother or, you know, the elder yeah. women in your family was like, this is the one that you should go for because he yeah. does this, mm -hmm. right? But he don't do nothing else. But he right. does not do anything to feed your spirit. Like, yes. there's no connection there whatsoever. And then you have to think, you know, am I able to spend, you know, 10, 20, 30, like the rest of my life with this man who is is good on the outside, but on the inside, what what is there? I don't know. Yeah. So, so, you, oh, so I was just going to say that you defined it when you asked the question, the good man versus the godly man. The godly man is the one who's trying to live his life for Christ. He's actually purposefully living out his life in accordance to the word of God. Mm -hmm. That is the definition between the two. There's mm -hmm. one that is going to church because it's what he was taught to do or because it's a good thing to do. It's a good place to get morals. It's a check that box, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but then there's some that's like, no, I'm purposely living my life for Christ. I'm not going to go to this other side and do all those other things. Because I have a purpose for my life, and I have direction for my life, and that's what I want. I know what I want. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. And, like, there's really no way to date someone who's just good, and then you stay godly. Like, it's, yeah. it's, it's not oh, happening. Yeah. Like, okay. it's either, yo, either it's going to be, <laughs> either it's going to be, like, y'all hooking up on the low, or mm -hmm. it's going to be, like, you're not all the way in your purpose, or whatever it is, it's, like, the good and the godly, like, that's not equally yoked. It's not happening. Yeah. So, yeah. If, if you settle for good, then you're not going to be able to be godly. So. Wow. So, yeah. You just need to say loud that. Yeah, just yeah, think just about that. that. Sit right there. Mm -hmm. No, no. That's all the way back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What you say? That's period, too. <laughs> <laughs> She like to tell you I'm old, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's real though, but it's it real. It you true. like getting this good man will cause you to not be godly. And I think that's who mm. and, and the question is, are you are you okay with that? Yeah. And if you are okay with that, then you get whatever comes with that. Right. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says that we got to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness mm -hmm. and all the things that we need will right. be added unto us. But if we're not seeking after his way of being right, mm -hmm. we won't have all of those things. Mm -hmm. I think that's, you know, yeah. a fair sure. assumption. <clears throat> so you went ahead like, I'm not really seeking your way of being right. I'm seeking my way of being right. Mm -hmm. And so you get all those things that will be added to you from getting your way of being right. 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 Absolutely. And I agree with what she said too. I think it's too, it's like you're, you you got to identify your purpose and what, what is your call to do? And if so, you know, and you want to live for the Lord, well, you need, you know, he's got to be a spiritual covering for you. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want a good man that's going to just provide for me, but I need him to, um, you know, pray for me and go to yeah. war in the spirit for yeah. me. We need yes. to break generational curses together. Yeah. Like that's what we need to do. And a, just a good man is not enough. We need so, I mean, and, and to your point, <clears throat> By him just providing, you know, physical things, right. is he actually providing for you? Right. Mm -hmm. Like my my thoughts is the answer to that is no. Because no. mm -hmm. let's just go ahead and say what it is. I can get my own groceries. Mm -hmm. Right. I can pay my own bills. Mm -hmm. What I need yeah. you for? I can do that. Myself. <laughs> Absolutely. I got Ooh. all that I need to be able to, to take care of myself. Mm -hmm. But what I cannot do right. is fulfill the call of God mm. upon my life, you know, in this particular way with some dead weight mm. on yes. me. Oh, yes. yes. that's what I can't do. Mm -hmm. And that's what it will be. That's and that's I exactly know. what it will be. That's exactly. That's exactly. I will not be able to elevate in the kingdom of God as long as you keep dragging mm. me down with your good life. Yes. Right. Yeah. That is, that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So I, I have a question for you ladies. 
when you meet this man of God. If you, if, if, let's just say you meet a man who claims to be a kingdom godly man. What is your expectation of him? What is your expectation for this for this man who says, I don't know, I'm a kingdom man, I'm a godly man. What does that mean to you? Mm -hmm. Well, I would say if you're a kingdom man, like, I expect you to show some fruit on your tree, first of all. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And I expect mm -hmm. you to have people in your life that are going to keep you accountable to that. Whether, yeah. like, whether you got a disciple or a mentor or some Christian mm -hmm. friend, mm -hmm. something, something. You need something. <laughs> <laughs> you need something. You need somebody. Listen. <laughs> life together but I need to be able to see where you're going and I need you to have some type of grasp on your purpose something like we need to grasp that's good that's, that's good. very good I don't have anything to say <laughs> <laughs> she didn't take it at all but yes I agree with everything she said he needs to have in, in my age bracket <laughs> I'm older than her. Just a little bit. But, um, I'm going to need to go. Alright, big six. Um, I do need him to have the accountability for sure. I need to see the fruit, like she said. I need to see him working in his, in his purpose. I need to see him actually yeah. doing something to bring it, to establish his purpose. Because at that point in his life, he should have or should be working towards that. Yeah. I might need just three S's. That's all. I'm For example, <laughs> just need three S's. I need this brother to know he's the son of God, so he knows his identity. Hmm. I need to know that he's a servant of God and that he's already in ministry. And then I need to know that he's a soldier of God. You can't be scared of the devil and then come with me. Right. Oh, oh, take it! I can just throw all stuff. Yeah, come on! Just get three of them. Come on! I need yeah. your. Let's let's yeah. let's, 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 let's repeat that for those who did not hear. <laughs> <laughs> say, that, say that again. <laughs> say that again. Say that again. Come on! 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 Right. He's not questioning where he falls. Yes. I need a servant of God. He's already in ministry serving. Yeah. And I need a soldier of God. You cannot be afraid of the devil and cover right. in me. That's the right. part. Show us over. <laughs> <laughs>
being yes. sanctified, meaning set apart. I'm not doing what everybody right. else is doing. No, I will not engage in premarital sex. Secure. No, I will yes. not engage in, in, in outside activities that's going to keep me from being focused on the Father. Yeah. No, I'm not going to do what everyone else is doing. That sanctification yeah. is lacking in the body mm -hmm. right. from married and unmarried alike. Let's talk mm -hmm. about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if we're saying this is who I need, this is what I expect from you. I expect you to live a sanctified life. Mm -hmm. I expect you to come out the gate saying, hey, that is something my husband told me like when we were dating, we were 17, and I said, you know, right off the bat, I said, I'm not having sex. I'm a virgin. I ain't doing that. And he said, well, you're not going to defile me either. I'm not. Gonna <laughs> I, was like, oh. so, I mean, that's the thing. He was not afraid to say, as a man, well, you know, he's 17, you know, you're coming into this man of the thing, but and even at that time, though, like, you won't defile me. I'm like, you ain't defiling me, you know. Mm -hmm. And again, if this is where I am, that's where you should be. Right. Yeah. If I got to try to pull you up to that, right. thank you. Yes. No. You ain't it, boo. Yeah. Like, if, that's not right. Mm -hmm. yeah, I shouldn't yes. have to pull you up to this. Right. Yes. Yes. It's true. And like, it's, I'm trying to tell y'all, it's not, this not going to work. Like, it's not going to work. You be trying to pull up a log, it's not happening. <laughs> Listen. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, you're a yeah. you know, If you are spending more of your trying time debating with him instead of developing yourself, there's an issue. Yes. Right. Or right. thinking that you can save him or get him saved. Oh, that's, oh my gosh. That, that, that's a thing. That's a that's that's a non starter. That's yeah. a yeah. play. That's a play for women. Stay in the away church, from out of the church, yeah. around the church, by the church, whatever. <laughs> wherever <laughs> your position <laughs> is, you cannot the only in my life, the only man who is growing into his manhood that I am going to raise is my son. Listen. Woo! That's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's period. Bro. That's your thing, period. <laughs>all love Jesus and you're all going hard for him trying to figure out how to please him by faith every day. Um, the struggle in doing that um, and not being married in this season is different for everybody. And it means something different for, him, for everybody. So we're talking about this being, you know, we talked about the struggle. So if you could just kind of define what is the struggle? Like, what does that mean for you? Like, what, is that, what does that mean for you? Well, honestly, the struggle is really about your identity. Um, I know they're laughing as I'm talking like this and I'm mentioning the word identity. <laughs> but, um, no, for real, honestly, the struggle is really understanding who you are in Christ as well as you know, being able to present yourself out there in a world where any and everything is acceptable. What about you? Uh, it's real dry out here. <laughs> No, but um, I would say pretty much what she said, um, you know, realizing that making the choice that you're not going to settle, mm, yeah. making that choice from the beginning before you're ready to get out there that no more, you know, recognizing the red flags immediately, um, you know, praying for that discernment so that, you know, because you don't want to waste your time. Um, you know, knowing that, yes, that they're going to send their representative in the beginning. So mm. that's why you need that discernment. Mm -hmm. and that's true. Um, I'm going to say it, agree, agree. I think for me it is keeping hope alive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Because the word tells right. us that, you know, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Yes. And so I think that um, along with what they've said, it's making sure that we remain confident and so connected to God that in the midst of the dryness and in the midst of, you know, anything goes and that's what we're pretty much competing against, right? Anybody can do anything. Um, so the life of a Christian seems very mundane and very boring, mm -hmm. uh, that we have to remain hopeful and anchor in the promises of God. And that can be a struggle because mm -hmm. I'm going to tell y'all, it looks like the, the women that don't live for Jesus are really winning. It looks like they win. Like y'all look like y'all having a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Knee deep in opposing everything that's precious to God, but dang, like they look like they're winning. 
And so our your, our focus, I feel like the struggle is remaining focused. Yeah. And um and, and hopeful, you know, mm -hmm. anchored in the promises of God and knowing that He does not lie. Yeah. No matter what we see. Um yeah, so in the same vein that all of them have said, I echo those same sentiments. Um, I guess my only thing to add to it is just making sure that everything that you look at, everything that you see, everything that you speak about, making sure that you're doing it through the lens of your relationship with Christ. Because when you don't, it looks really nice. <laughs> but then you're like, uh, that doesn't line up with that, though, so I'm not to see <laughs> So... It's just being true to who you found, who you've discovered you are in Christ, and making sure that whatever you're looking at or going for or seeking lines up with that as well. And for me, um, well, I'm in college. I'm like, I'm, I'm young. It's so like, <laughs> it's so like people just, just like I feel like people my age is. You know, they get to have their hot girl summer, and they get to do whatever they want. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I'm out here trying to live safe, you know what I'm saying? So, that's hard, number one. And then, number two, like, I feel like at my, in my, in my age, I'm not ready to get married tomorrow. But when I think about, like, okay, not like 10, 10 more years, Jesus. So, like, you get, like, the I'm not ready now, but, like, how long is I'm not ready? So, it's like, it's hard to get that timing. Like, what are we doing here? So, hmm. What's the hookup culture? So, the, so the hookup culture. So the hookup culture. Um, I feel like it's a thing. Mostly, maybe it started in college, but then I also see how it drifts through time as you get older. Where the goal is to, you know, get with as many people as you can with this minimal connection or relationship building with this person as you possibly can. So if it was your friends, then now they're an acquaintance because you all got together. So, you know, oh, it's, you know we no looked up, up back. Right. But we're not really connected. Right. I can wow. move on to the next. And then, so you do that in college. And then you graduate and you move on. Well, I got to build up my career. I got to build up my life. So I don't have time yet. I'm not ready. Right. So it doesn't just happen in the college years. Yeah. It, it continues on. And then, oh, shoot. Does that say 39? Huh. <laughs> so, what am I going to do with my life at this point? Oh, let me see. Who can I see? You look good. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so you get connected with this person, but you've spent the past 10, 15, 20 years, however long it is that your biological clock is ticking, mm -hmm. and you've not cultivated any sort of relationship skills. You don't know how to you know, be vulnerable in front of somebody and share your life with them. And so you continue to just hook up with people right. because that's all you know. That's all you have developed. And, and then it's, it's an emptiness because now you're ready to, you know, uh, uh, either have children or settle down and you can't because you don't know how. Right. And what's unfortunate is that a lot of men, not just in college, are doing that, but their 30s and their 40s, and it's like they're a grown boy, not a grown man. Ah! Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the problem. Delayed adolescence. Yes. <laughs> Watching, you've been over here worshiping the Lord. Like, I think that's awesome. We go to the same church. Let's hook up. Do you? Do you? Mm -hmm. No. No. Why not? I'm not looking for a hookup. What are you looking for? <laughs> <laughs> Jump right into that one. We did it. What's our answer So I want a man of integrity. I want him to have some integrity yeah. to his faith. And I want him to be a kingdom godly man. I mm -hmm. want it to show in the way that he carries himself, in the way that he speaks, the way that he acts. Mm -hmm. It should emanate from him. Absolutely. Like it should just be something that is just <clears throat> evident. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Let's talk about that evident. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, let's talk yeah. about that evident. Because you know what? I, 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 one of the things that frustrates me is when people say things like, well, you don't know. 
you know, they might be a baby Christian. You don't, you don't really know mm. where they are. Don't judge right. them. Right. Right. Like, yeah. You're being too, mm. you're being too mm. hardcore. You're being too, mm. you're too extra in your faith. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you know? Like, if I can go to a man's Facebook page or anybody's Facebook page for that matter and know that they're a Bears fan and know what restaurants they like mm -hmm. and know where they shop, like if they can advertise that so freely. Mm -hmm. mm. Yep. But we're told to dig. We have to dig to make sure that they're they're saved. Right. We have to right. dig to make sure that they're you, they're Christian. And that as women who set a standard that says, no, I want to know based off of you hearing and doing the word, which means you're going to be fruitful, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Then we're, it's almost as though there's a stigma of, yeah, you're being extra. Like you want to marry Jesus. Nobody's perfect. People actually say that to you. People, people actually say, say that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Seriously? Yes. You want to have my time? I'm actually ignorant. I'm not really that ignorant. I'm just really trying to figure this out. <laughs> like, because I know people do this dumb stuff. I'm yeah. It's dumb. Yeah. It is yeah. dumb. Yeah. Like, the main thing is that, like, I, I, what I hear and what I see is, you know, I want to please God with my life. And, and I know so many women like, look, I done been out here, I done did some stuff, I'm done with that. Mm -hmm. I don't want no more parts of that. Right, mm -hmm. right. I want something that's that's real, that will that will last, that will actually produce something great yeah. for the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Why why should I have to settle for exactly. a you know, just this good guy who on the surface yes. Seems right. to be like, yo, he's nice and he's okay with me going to church, but mm -hmm. right. he ain't really on that, or right. yeah. he's just a church goer. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Where he's just an attendant mm -hmm. person, like he just come yeah, in. Because mm -hmm. oh, yeah, that's what that's what he's supposed to do. Right. Right. <laughs> right. And he holds church. anybody accountable? Mm -hmm. Like I, I think someone had already mentioned that, but it is about accountability. Mm -hmm. You know, you you're not. They're not challenged. You know, it is just, okay, oh my gosh, he comes to church. He is on time. Oh, we tithe. Yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, he's good. You know, he's trying. He's doing the best that he can. So there's all these, you know, different standards. And, you know, pa you know, they, they get to pass on this and pass on that. Yeah. Nobody is really digging deep to develop the character. Whereas on for the woman, you know, it's all about, well, you know, you got to make sure you cover up the knees. You got to make sure that you're wait, wait, right. But not every gotta, guy, no, but not every woman. <laughs> not, not every woman, but but still there is that standard. If you right. want to meet yeah. that, you know, quote unquote, good Christian woman, exactly. you know, persona or image or whatever, there's just certain things like, oh, you're going to wear that. Oh, you speak like this. Oh, your hair yeah. is like that. You know, it's all these different standards that, you know, are set for women. But for man, it's just, you know, if he's not like the pastor or, you know, on the deacon board or, or you know, <laughs> something like that, that he's in the church, man, he comes. He shows exactly. up. Right. Oh, did he start? He's in the parking lot. Yes. 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 That. What yes. you just said. The it's standard is so, so yeah. low. It's very low. Women, your appearance. Women, your education. Women, your attendance. Women, your commitment. Men just get here. But if we minister to the men, you know, if we bring them in, so to speak, then that's even, you yeah. know, right? Yeah. You, this, you know, don't yeah. min, don't min, min, wait, missionary date. Yeah, right? yeah let's don't say don't, don't discipleship date. Don't, don't, dis yeah. Yeah, don't discipleship date. Like, mm -hmm. um, but we're, we're we're the ones that are out here, mm -hmm. right? And so if they're not met with other men that hold them to a standard, then they're left with the woman who will do anything mm -hmm. and say she's a Christian. Or the woman who will do what Christ says, and she's on tea time with Tiff talking about. <laughs> but, but, yeah. I, but I think what you're saying though is it seems as if that woman who doesn't have the same standards as you mm -hmm. is seeming to get the husband. Correct. Correct. It, it's, seeming, it's, it's seeming. It's seemingly. Seeming. Yeah. Right. It's seeming. It's seeming. It's like, you know what? Yeah. Well, you know, we ain't really, you know, I'm down for whatever mm -hmm. so long as we keep up this particular appearance mm -hmm. yeah. or so long as, you know, we still, you know, we got at least this bottom basement mm -hmm. barrier where we're like, okay, well, we're going to go to church. Mm -hmm. Or I'm at least gonna go. I'm not gonna stop that. Right. And and as long as you're okay with that, I'll be okay with that. Right. Right. Um. <clears throat> so, I guess we have to figure out what is. So for the woman who's who's in that, who's thinking like, but well, what y'all saying don't sound like that's the way. 
how do we get her to know that that's the way? Or, or is that the way? What about this woman? Like, you know, for who we're sitting here like, and we're talking, and we're women of a certain age, and we're like, okay, yeah. and I'm trying to, you know, do this the right way, but men yeah. seem to be repelled by this, even in the church. Right. Mm -hmm. And so for that young lady who wants to be in a relationship and who wants to be married and all that other kind of stuff, and she's like, yeah, I don't know that I want to follow this. I don't know that I want to be a part of this. What do you tell her? I think the first thing that you tell her is that this is the gospel. Mm. Is for you to develop your connection and your relationship with Christ. What is it that has drawn you into Christ? Because at the same time, I feel like that that is the wooing process. That was something that maybe I struggled with. You know, mm. my focus was always on, you know, yes, I love Jesus, but I also want a husband. I also mm. want a man. And so I would do things to try to, you know, make myself more attractive or, or whatever it it is that you kind of conform yourself into, you know, mm -hmm. especially if you're not the, you know, we joke about it now, but if you're not the girl that's got, you know, bodied up or you got the face or you're just the average girl, you try to find what your thing is to fit in mm -hmm. and, and be connected and be seen and, and accepted. So you can easily get into that trap of, you know, well, I, I am cool. You know, if you like football, I like football. If you like this, I like this. Mm -hmm. You know, whether or not that's true to yourself or not, you could fall into that. So to me, my conversation would be is, well, why, why did you choose Christ? What was it about you? There's always that key thing that you heard in your heart, that your heart heard, mm -hmm. that your heart was, was longing for to hear that Jesus answered, that the word of God answered for you. And that would be the thing that, I would want to encourage her to develop about herself and look for that in Christ so that her guard is built up around and wrapped around Jesus and not in, I got to be this person or try to find that in this man. Mm -hmm. You know, you're protecting yourself with the word and, and that's your focus now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's really about building your, building that woman up from the inside out so that she has the guard mm -hmm. for when she's, going out into the world. Yeah, I would say too that, you know, again, like going back to not settling, and I think that a lot of people settle out of out of fear, out of loneliness, mm -hmm. out of boredom, mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's just, I, I agree with what she's saying that, um, you know, I think it's more of, um, we have to have standards, not preferences. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yes. I think that that's checklist. just, right, yeah. Yeah. you know, because it's like, we have to be equally yoked. So if you're not where I'm at, at minimum, it's just, it's not gonna work. And that's okay that everybody's at different levels, but not everybody's gonna be your husband or your Come wife. On. Mm -hmm. Come so on. that's okay. Yeah. But they have to at least be where you're at, especially if, you know, a woman looking for a man that he's supposed to be the head, so he should be, you know, at least where you're at, spiritually. Yes, amen. 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 <laughs> Could not say that one better. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I love, that you have to have standards, right? And not preference. Come on, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I think that is what's lost. And one thing I would I would even add to that to that young lady is the Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. Mm -hmm. And so, are you willing to have to not have standards and not do anything? Because really, your end goal is not to please God. What it sounds like right. is that you're trying yes. to please yourself. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so, if that's if that's what you're trying to do, just do you, boo. Mm -hmm. And don't you know? And then, and whatever consequences come right. with not having these standards, then you go ahead and have to deal with that too. Yep. But if your goal is to please God, mm -hmm. if your goal is to live your life no other way than according to His Word. Then you have to you have to have these godly standards right. where you're like, no, I'm for for God I live and for God I'll die. Right. And if I gotta die in this thing, not having succumbed to the pressures of men, mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. good with that. Yes. Right. Yeah. That sounds like mm -hmm. that's about right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I think that we sometimes forget to, and I, and maybe we just don't like to talk about it. That um, along with it being the gospel, 
their sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And maybe, you know, I know amongst this group, because we've had the opportunity to talk, that we have all endured or are walking through living sacrifices. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, um, mm -hmm. but some people will focus just on that. Yeah. Right? right? Mm -hmm. Just right. the sacrifice. And like you said, if they're focusing just on that and they're not focusing on developing their relationship with God, then it, the, the payoff is going to be unbalanced, mm -hmm. right? It's not going to, it's not going to seem like something worth doing. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I, I, um, I was thinking about some things and... <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> she was thinking about, about some things. Oh, let me see. <laughs> That she real quick. No, I'm for real. Mainly because, <laughs> mainly because my heart really goes out to to people who, because uh, I've I've had over the course of my life lots of friends, very very close friends of mine, who I see them as completely uh, just they love the Lord with all their heart, soul, mind, being. They're beautiful people, um, and for whatever reason, they just, you know, like they, they haven't found, they haven't been found, mm -hmm. you know, to have a husband, and I'm like, Lord, why is that? Like, I, you know, I don't know, because I feel like, like, you know, they're so bomb, like, how come men don't see how bomb they are? Mm -hmm. um, and so, when I think about that scenario, I think about how the Lord has for each of us different things that we have to deal with, experience throughout our lives. Um, and and I recognize that um, this is just me. Maybe I'm wrong. I just, I don't know where the same men are like the for real ones. Like, cause I'm thinking like it's just way more women yeah. out here in there this. Are. Every time, cause I'm like, I got too many bomb friends that really should. I mean, like any man would be, I mean, would be blessed beyond measure to have them. Yet I'm like, I don't even see it. Like, cause I'm, I'm searching high and low. Look, I'm, I'm emailing people like, hey. Are you still single? Because I got friends. <laughs> I'm like, hey, what's going on? Hi. <laughs> <Hi. laughs> I'm like, I'm calling for my girl. Cause I'm just... <laughs> That's all <good. laughs> She's been waiting for this one. She's like, yeah. what's all about this? <laughs> I mean, <I'm> like, <laughs> mm -hmm. but, but for real, for real, like, I, I really do think there is a shortage. Yes. You all agree? Yes. 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 You know, and I feel like a broken record because I know I'm always in your ear about all this. I'm, I'm in her ear about this. <laughs> I am. I'm in her ear about this because I know she got other ears that she can be in their ear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm strategic with the ears I be in, first of all. Um, women, we're relational. Mm -hmm. When we go to the hairdressers, when we're getting our nails done, when we find that place that we shop for our clothes, and there's a conference at church, right? And there's a Bible study going on. We've got a revelation. We're sharing those things because we're relational. Mm -hmm. Our good brothers in Christ, they get they sanctified booths. They don't lock. They like yeah. to minister to the next generation. You know what? They are ministering to the three-year-olds. <laughs> and I forgot about the 30 year old. <laughs> And so, I, yeah. and I've said this before, it's the discipleship. And it's not, no, you as, as men in the church need to be responsible for m getting every single woman married. You just simply need to do what the gospel says and evangelize hmm. and share the gospel. We're not saying we need 15 of you. Yeah. <laughs> We're saying no, 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 we don't need, we don't need 15 of that particular that. person. Yes. But we yeah. are saying is where is the, where does the evangelism happen from that perspective? Mm -hmm. um, and so it's very imbalanced. And so while we're in the church getting everything perfect yeah. <laughs> to be found, there's nobody to find us because they still at the 50 yard line. They still at the They go to church on Christmas with the girl that they met at the club because <laughs> they found some kind of moral checklist you know, for the holiday. So it's so imbalanced. Mm -hmm. That's why there are no men. There well, there is not that there are no men, but that's where I think the imbalance comes from. Mm -hmm. Is there, there are just more women in church? Like everybody always talk yeah. about that grandma and their mama took them to church. Like it's just more women, and so it's like you get the small little pool of men, and then it's like you don't really like the little small pool. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's <laughs> always some corny dude. You yeah. Like, okay. All right. Like you know what? Okay. The slim pickets. So yeah. I mean, for every man that is oh, listening man. right now, and you don't, and you're single, you're like, you know, I don't have a wife. Don't be corny though. Like. Figure out how to reduce <laughs> your story. Okay. Come as you are, brother. We'll judge. <laughs> and for all the brothers who are watching with your wife, your mayor, you've been booed up. You put a ring on it. All of that. I do think it's important that you do your part. Evangelize. Help the brothers get right. Because right now, when it seems like they all locked up, they all on corner somewhere, they all out somewhere that ain't here. And the struggle is real. Like this is where the yeah. struggle is because we like we dressing up for ourselves. Like, <laughs> like girl, it's a cute dress. I'm like, I know it's cute. I want some dude to tell me it's a cute dress. That's <laughs> <laughs> all I'm saying. I, 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 and this you know, is why I'm from the church in my Crocs. <laughs> 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 hey, listen, if somebody walk out of the church, jeans, a t-shirt, all the time. Because we got a whole <laughs> but is that is that right? That we should have like that we should just come look at any kind of way just because ain't no dudes here right I now. So. No, I don't no, think you're no, no, me. No. no. I'm like y'all have to look like y'all got we're in preparation too. If you want to get married or you want you know you got to be in preparation. Like Esther had to prepare for like a year. Yeah. Right. So I mean she wasn't looking raggy. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, that's one thing. Right. It's a pet peeve of mine. Yeah. Women, yeah. yeah. stop yeah. looking like you're homeless. Wise, so. Coming into the church house and going anywhere. Like stop going place. to the store with your with your rags on your head yeah. and and your pajamas. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. You talk about, I ain't can't find no man. Don't nobody want you <laughs> looking like that. <laughs> and it's just awful. No, yes. Yeah, it's, yeah. It is it's unacceptable. <laughs> Favorite Bible character? 
Esther, Queen Esther. Mm -hmm. Look, she owned it. Thank she you, Ruby. Uh, Nikki, favorite scripture? Ooh, Proverbs 23. What? The whole chapter? Yeah, actually. Or, I, like I like Psalms 23, I like Proverbs 23, and I like Psalm 119. Psalm 19. What's your favorite scripture? Uh, it's, it's one that's very popular. It's Jeremiah 29, 11. Okay. Yeah. It's popular. <clears throat> Psalms 119, the whole chapter. So See, 119. I, I kind of go between two. I like um, Ephesians 5, like the whole chapter. Um, and then I like uh, Psalm 94. Uh, Romans 8, 28, and um, I like Ephesians 6. I like Ephesians 6. Too. Oh, a whole chapter with it. Yeah. Oh. Ephesians 6. Okay, okay. Oh, that battle, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm going to get the full armor again. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> <But>, so, <laughs> um, what do you think is the most important, the most important part of your spiritual walk? Ooh, I would say the, um, <clears throat> really understanding what drew me to Christ and cultivating that. That's, that's kind of why I brought it up before because it was, it was the thing that held me and anchored me the most. Why was I attracted to you? Mm. Why did I listen when you called me? Was it just to be saved or was it more? And once I took the time to uncover that, I learned so much more about who I am, mm. why I am the way that I am, and what I was created to do. So that was a key pivotal thing. Oh, I want your mind. Same, same question. Um, I would say just choosing every day to make sure that I'm walking in my purpose and that you know I'm just staying on track with God. You know, no more, no more delays, no more you know uh, double mindedness. Just mm -hmm. making that choice every single day. Hmm. Hmm. Um, gosh, there's several. Knowing, okay, from one of the most important parts is um, knowing, for me, it was knowing God as Father. Mm -hmm. um, I think that when, when I got the revelation of God as my Father, and I moved from uh, the things that manifested from an orphan spirit, right, mm -hmm. or a spirit of, of, of abandonment, because um, for me, my father's deceased. Um, that was pivotal for me because I realized that I was already provided for, I was already protected, I was already covered. And so those things that, that you know, women go through, I had a sense of security going through them because it's like, no, you're my dad, though. you're my father. I'm not alone. You know, um, he's bringing me mechanics to fix my car. I mean, simple yeah. things, you know, mm -hmm. the things that you don't think about on every day, but then you really think about them. Mm -hmm. um, so knowing God is my father, that he is Papa, and that I can get in his lap at any time. Mm. That's good. Yeah. Oh, my turn. <laughs> um, <laughs> learning to trust him, like in different areas of my life. You can trust him in church, <laughs> in your um, Bible study, and in your worship, but trusting him with your career, with picking a home, picking a spouse, um, just learning to trust him in all the other areas of my life. That was the, and is the most important part for me. Hmm. What about you? We were talking about, just in case you missed it, what did you think is the most important part of your spiritual walk? Um, I think for me, it's personal devotion. Like, I like quality time with people, and so it just only makes sense that, like, spending quality time with God would be, like, important. And so I think just like disciplining myself to be making sure like it's like a daily thing that I'm spending time with God has really grown me a lot. I just wanted to make sure I, I, I thought that's so sweet. I'm <laughs> love it a little, love all your answers. Because you guys like are amazing. Um, so I have a, I'm, I'm, I'm switching up just a little bit, just gears a little bit. What do you guys think about online dating? Because we just, we've been in quarantine, so you can't go out and see okay. people. You can't go out and see people. It's all online. I mean, like, this is the only way you can really kind of connect with people. <sighs> oh. oh, I'll speak to it. Okay. Um, I, during the quarantine, decided to go back and venture into the dating world and um, started with the online dating. It's been an interesting experience. Mm. Um, I've learned 
to set boundaries, mm. um, whether it's with my phone number, uh, mm -hmm. where to meet someone. Mm -hmm. I have good advice, good godly counsel to tell me not to leave people alone. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the, the adage that people put send a representative when you meet them in person, they also do that online. But mm -hmm. I thank God that he is there um, giving me the discernment and showing me, like uncovering mm. where there are lies or inconsistencies to show me earlier rather than later. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I think that's been for sure. Anybody else? Um, personally, I'm not a fan. Mm. I, it's not something that I will, I will, I will not do it. And, and the reason why is exactly what Rosie said too, is it's the representative part. And the thing is, like I could put in my you know, whatever, the entry, bio, whatever, I love the Lord, whatever. I've had guys that, you know, have tried to come with me to church just to get me, mm -hmm. you know, and the thing is, is like, I, I can't, and the thing is, is too, is when they're online dating, um, I think even if you're going to online date, that you should have like a second phone that you use just for that, so you don't give any, you know, of your personal information, yeah. but yeah. Um, as far as that's like when men are on these things, you don't know what their motives are. They are, but their motive for sure is they are going on this website to connect with you in whatever way that they want. Versus if you were to meet your husband at a grocery store. Now he's not going to the grocery store looking for a woman. He's just getting some groceries. Mm, you know, something. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, you know what I mean, though, but Everywhere versus, is the dating ground. <laughs> yeah. Versus though online is just that is what he's mm -hmm. you know he's going for. So. Personal for me, that's just not something that I'm that's interesting. Oh, yeah. I have an on and off switch when it comes to online dating and, and obviously right now because we gotta be inside, it's on. Um, but a lot of what Rosie said uh, is true, but also just you have to put in the commitment. So I, I, I kinda adopted the same mindset about, you know, I would just wanna go, you know, into the grocery store and be pushing my carts and oh, you dropped the apple. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you have that moment, you know, in the produce section or whatever. But it, no matter what, no matter how you meet them, you still have to take that time to develop a yes. relationship and a connection with them. And now that's kind of what I'm looking for when I go through an online dating profile is I'm actually really swiping past. And this was something I didn't necessarily do all the time. I'm swiping past the one, you even have your shirt on? Swipe. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Right. I'm not even interested in that. No. You know what I mean? Or if your, you know, if your profile is regular, you know, kind of normal, there's nothing that's, you know, pinging off of, you know, red flags off your profile. But the first thing out of your mouth, if I, if, if we start saying hi, how are you? You pass the pleasantries, and you hit me with your picture, you're sexy. Oh God, you don't know nothing about me. <laughs> you just looked at my picture, and you, and you hit me with the sexy. Delete, delete. I can't delete you faster. You know, I wish I just deleted you like before I deleted you. Because right. again, knowing where you you've come from, if that has been a struggle for you, mm -hmm. or even just you already are putting yourself out there as as a piece of meat, and that's mm -hmm. not what I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. You know. Yep. So it, it's really just you know the discernment. Obviously, that is the paramount and yes. key thing to, to online dating and having success in that but also just know what your triggers are mm -hmm. you know what are the things that will quickly turn you on and off you know yep. with a person yeah. So, yeah and people my age I don't know if y'all know about this they use like tinder Ugh. that app but that's like <laughs> it's literally just like hookup culture on your phone right. like we're not doing that yes. Right. it's a wrap yes it is it is it is you think real old you know you know Producers over there like the shade. All <laughs> 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 yeah, What do you think about it? Um, you know what? I'm not opposed to it. I agree with everything that everybody said about it. I don't know about the Tinder. I don't know that. So oh, the shades, oh, on me. Oh, it's got shades on me. <laughs> but um, I think that the most important thing is um, to represent who you are because that's the only person you have control over. Mm -hmm. So don't leave Jesus to be the last thing you mentioned in your profile. Like, yeah. Say his name a couple of times, like in a couple of different languages, and maybe they'll pick up. Right? 
<laughs> and then you have to be super transparent. Like you have to have people that know what you're doing, I think, because there's such an ability to be um, hidden. Mm -hmm. Like even for you know even for us as single women like you know well, I kind of might like this one so I might not mention this until I know I know. Well no mm -hmm. don't wait till you think you know you know until yeah, people right. like about the process as you're going along. Mm -hmm. um, and then you just have to you know be discerning because crazy shows up everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And like Rosie was saying with the boundaries like that's the other thing too yeah. you know yeah. if you if you are in a po and you have to know yourself. Mm -hmm. Why are you online? Are you online because you need a hookup? Or are you online because you're generally trying to find someone? I mean, like, just really understanding that because a trigger could be it's whatever hour your bewitching hour is, <laughs> and you swipe, 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 you come across somebody, and you, it, hey, the connection is there, and you don't have that accountability right. where, you know, people knowing that you're online, and it can just be just as simple as that, and you're, you know, the next day, like, oh my gosh, what just happened? Yeah. How did they get here? Yeah. <laughs> right. I think, too, so we just have to pay attention in any kind of dating, online yeah. or when you're mm -hmm. with them, whatever. Uh, I think we as women, like, we tend to talk too much, sometimes we say too much. I think for sure, yes. Jesus has to be the number one, and mm -hmm. I would never dispute that. That's number one regardless, but sometimes we say too much, and really we should be the ones conducting the interview as women. We're dating, collecting data. Yes. You know, we're trying to understand where they're at so that we, we can see, you know, uh, no thank you, this is not going to work, you know. Yeah. That is so good. I like that. That is so yeah, good. We do do that, right? Yeah. yeah. Like I like I like Italian food, right. and I like this, and then two days yeah, later, later he says, yeah. two children, three yeah. children, three children, you know. Right. And then three right. days later, he's like, you know what? I'm gonna have two children. I love Italian. You're like, he's the one. Right. Like you're just. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, he's that. Oh my God. But Jesus, this is you, huh? Okay. <laughs> like you just told him that two days ago. Right. Right. You just say too much. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they ghost you and then you don't tell your whole life story and they yes. gone somewhere. Yes. They, 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 they ghosted you. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think that is the most important thing. Do not share too much information yeah. about yourself. I'm very, mm -hmm. I'm guarded. Like, even though I'm yes. loud and, and all this, I'm real guarded about what I share with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't need to know all that about me. Now, so you can follow me on social media and you know only three things about me. Mm -hmm. I got a husband, two children, and a church. That's pretty much all you're going to know. <laughs> because that's all I'm willing to share, especially right. with y'all who I don't know. Yeah. No, you don't get to know Tiffany intimately like that because, right. again, mm -hmm. ain't none of your business. But I think and we need to. to. <laughs> We need to become more guarded where we're asking, you know, the right questions. But, and mm -hmm. I think even more so, I was telling this to some people, and they were like, yeah, you know, I was creating my online profile because I, I personally don't think it's a bad, bad idea to have, you know, an online dating account um, if you do it right. And what I mean by do it right, like, I say, because the <laughs> I, you know, met a man of God like who did not care what anybody thought about his love for Jesus. He wanted everybody to know yeah. I love Jesus. And so I said, if your profile your profile must scream that this is mm -hmm. my life. Mm -hmm. And now I am right. I am a as my my good see, you gotta ask me who my favorite singer was. I love Jonathan and Reynolds. If you're watching, I love your music so much. He has such a beautiful voice. Yes, yes, he does. Mm -hmm. So anyway, but he says like I'm a Christ representative. Like that's what you know, yeah. he, you know, that's what he talks about all the time. I am a Christ representative. Mm -hmm. And my whole life reflects the fact that I represent Christ. <clears throat> and my profile should scream that from the highest mountain. And if that means I get zero swipes and rights and all of that, <laughs> amen. You can tell she ain't been on the site. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God she hasn't been on the site. Clearly I haven't. <laughs> rights and rights. Whatever. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But for real, for real. And, and, and I'm like, and, and so if, if, if you're concerned or worried that you're going to repel people, great. You are going to repel yeah. people who are not as, as gun co about it as you are. You don't want them in your life anyway. No. Yeah. And so I'm yeah. like, yeah, go ahead. As long as you actually present yourself 
as the as a real legit bona fide no questions asked no doubt about it woman of God. Mm -hmm. I'm not playing games with y'all. Mm -hmm. And if that's how I'm thinking, you know, if that's how you put it out there, go for it. Cause the jokers ain't gonna really be 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 checking for you that much. They mm -hmm. like as soon as they see like man, she she like yeah she a little bit too much. That's right. <laughs> Cause I want a brother that's too much with me. <laughs> Right? Yes. Yes. No, facts, facts. <laughs> and I think what I really think is that I see women who are who don't want to do that because they have a spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. And this is I was sharing with you all and I'm sharing with you um, that the Lord woke me up early this morning to share this with me. And he said, Listen, you got to talk about this fear. Ruby said it earlier today. I mean, he said, you've got to talk about this fear, and fear is what really dominates the decision-making of, mm -hmm. of, of many in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And that fear of loneliness, yep. the fear of growing mm -hmm. old alone, the fear of, of being, of not finding that person, that mm -hmm. fear drives you to have a questionable, questionable profile. Mm -hmm. It drives you to give attention to some joker that don't need your attention. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and the, what the Lord showed me this morning, he said, listen, make sure you let them know this First John 4, 18. It's on the screen eventually. Um, it says, there is no fear in love. Mm -hmm. But perfect love casts out fear. Because fear has torment. Yes. He that fears has not been made perfect in love. And if you find yourself in a situation ship, in the hookup culture, mm -hmm. if you find yourself in this quasi online relationship with somebody who you don't really know, it's because you have not been made perfect in mm -hmm. God's love. And you're operating out of a spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. And what you need to know for that young lady who is like, I don't really know if this is attractive enough for me to follow this path that you all are talking about. Mm -hmm. What you need to know is that too is fear. Mm -hmm. yeah. That fear mm -hmm. of being like who you see here, like you, know, you don't know if that's attractive, that's fear. Yeah. And because of that, you need to understand that the Bible says that fear has Torment. Yep. So whatever that relationship is that you're willing to to re, to relax your standards for, that you're willing to forego the word of God to receive, you mm -hmm. will have torment in that relationship. Mm -hmm. yep. That is an un, uh, uh, undeniable fact from the word of God. Yep. That fear has torment. Mm -hmm. And if you find yourself in one of these Situationships, I kind of like that. <laughs> if you find yourself inside of that, you will have a torment ship, mm -hmm. is what you're going to have. That's true. And yeah. it's going to manifest yeah. itself in different yeah. ways. Yeah. Yeah. If you are in a relationship with someone, and, and, and while you're in counseling and you lie to your counselors about certain things, you don't want them. Because what happens is when you find this person, you know some stuff. You see them red flags. They fly up all over the place. But you don't want to say it in the counseling because what you don't want, you're fearing that the counselor will tell you, I probably shouldn't get married. So you don't release it. You don't say it. You don't do it. You go through this process. Lie to your counselors. Lie to the people around you because you fear being alone. Yeah. And what happens is you get into this merge and torment is following you all the live long day. Mm -hmm. And you trying to figure out how in the world did I get here? How come y'all ain't tell me? How come yeah. this and how come that? How come you did it out of a spirit of fear, woman of all? Yeah, yeah and I agree with that 100%. <clears throat> and I want to just say is that like I was that person where I didn't do it God's way. Mm. You know, I, I did it my way. And I can promise you that God's way is the best way, yeah. the only way you want to do it, because it's torment. I was not at peace mm. at all. There was no peace. Mm. It's just, it's, it's, it's not good. And the thing is, is that even if, you know, the guy that, uh, one of my exes, you know, I, 
he seemed like a good guy. Yeah. 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 But he was that. he wasn't yeah. a kingdom Come man. Come yeah. on. Yeah. So that and and right there, you know, because it's like because the fear, I was like, you know, uh, physically he wasn't really my type, whatever, but he was a good guy, he was a nice guy. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, let me just, you know, I don't want to miss out on something, mm -hmm. but let me go ahead and, and try it, you know. And then yeah. the red flags were all over the place. And I was like, <laughs> even he was like, you know, it seems like you got one foot in, one foot out, what's up with you? Because I didn't have peace. Mm -hmm. But then I was like, okay, let me choose to go in it all the way anyway. Mm -hmm. Ooh. A mistake because no peace again, and then I wound up, wound up getting so hurt and so broken. Yeah. And God, because of His grace and His mercy and His love, healed me, you know, whole and everything. But I will never again do it my way. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the thing. Mm -hmm. You you that's good. you have to <clears throat> get settled, and it takes a while. This is not an easy yeah. thing that you just like. I am gonna live for Jesus and be completely <laughs> abstinent. <laughs> But that thing about that piece, that thing about that piece, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I lovingly joke because I like to laugh and have fun and all of that. And so my season, I call it the dark decade. Yeah. And that, during that time, that span of my life where I was doing things my way because yeah. I was tired of being alone. Tired of it. I'm tired. I felt, I felt my biological clock. I felt my mortality. I felt all of that. Yeah. Like, what am I doing with my life? What's the sum total? Yeah. I don't have the things that I felt like I should have had mm -hmm. at that point, or I'm looking at my peers and they have these things and I don't. So I'm trying to manifest them and manually doing it. And every, I mean, and it was consistent. And I was like, how I am successful. I have two degrees. I have this, 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 and this. How am I the, the biggest failure? <laughs> I mean, epically failing in this one particular area of my life, I just could not do it. And the more I got into it, the, the worse I felt, the more that torment just kind of yeah. ate at me at night. Yeah. That was, mm -hmm. that was when Ooh, as the sum total when you are by wrong. yourself and you have just ended your day and you go over and you look at what did I accomplish today? And, and, and it just, the accuser of the brother just eating at you, mm -hmm. eating at you, yeah. picking at you, picking at you and tearing your self-esteem down. That thing is real. It's it's yeah. not a joke. It's yeah. not something that you know just is like oh they just talk about it. And it's not that bad. That's the lie to get you in it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to tell you that ah you know what what are they really talking about? Is it really that bad? Yes, it's <laughs> it is that wholeheartedly bad, yeah. that bad. And then yeah. when you're in it, see, told you you shouldn't have did it. You did it your way. Now look at you. Right. You still single. <laughs> you still ain't got it. <laughs> Feeling like out what you want, you know, and you broke yeah. it. Now what you gonna do? Like it, it never ends until you make that decision to say, but but you are faithful. Your promises are real. Mm -hmm. What you have said has not changed from day one to day mm -hmm. now. And so you make that connection again. Going back, what was it that wooed you? For yes. me, it was the love, the consistent, mm -hmm. never failing, never ending love of God. That at any mm -hmm. turn, at every place that I thought I could go and try to find something, he was there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wherever I thought I could dick and you know duck and dodge and do something else, he was there. Mm -hmm. So being able to rely on that consistently and then letting my my heart heal from that process. Yeah. That's how I'm able to be able to sit in the chair because there there was a day that I was like, oh, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, same. Yeah. <laughs> And what's so good about God is that, you know, the, the Holy Spirit is still inside of you. And that's where, you know, you're not getting that peace because he's trying to tell you, you know, because God is not the author of confusion. You know, and that happens a lot even in situationships, you know. Uh, mm. What are we? Or you're not ready. Why aren't you ready? You're not ready. You know, because that's not the one, yeah. you know. Mm. So, wow. Uh, did you have something you wanted to before I said this? I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I talked to this woman. Uh, she and I were having this conversation. And this is a woman who, she was like, you know, I really want to uh, do what God has called me to do, walk in my purpose. I'm really, um, she has been taking the word of God seriously um, and just really beginning, you know, just not beginning, just living her life according to the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. But then she said something to me one time. We were talking and she said, 
but I refuse to be old and alone. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, what does that mean? She was like, you know, I hear what you're saying. I hear you, but I refuse to be old and alone. So, and, and, she, and, and she, and she said, and if that, you know, you know, she, people like to joke like, well, you know, if my Larry don't come around or whatever, <laughs> then, you know, I'm going to get hairy. <laughs> what? You know, like, I'm, 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 I'm settling though. And, 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 and so, and, and, you know, it becomes like, well, if I, if he don't come on the time that I need him to come, right? I'm going to settle for the good man and not the godly man. Right. right. And and I, I want to say to every woman out there who is frustrated, who is who is tired, all of you, if, if, you know, you, you've been in this and you're holding out and you're waiting and you're trying to figure things out. Um, I, I, I guarantee you that a good man would not be good enough. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. He won't be. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And and the truth is that decision, that whole, I don't care what happens, I'm not gonna be old and alone. That's fear. Yep. Yeah. And that good man is going to torment you for the rest of your yep. days. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Truly. Mm -hmm. Truly. Happens. And it's something that that you need to reconcile mm -hmm. before you get to mm -hmm. that point. Mm -hmm. It's something you must mm -hmm. reconcile that no matter what you must decide to live your life according to the word of God. Come what may. And, I, and of course, and I'm saying this with somebody who has a warm body. And I get that. And I I, I, I make no apologies for it, but I understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, but at the same time, I also know that if you really want what God, God's best for you, there are certain areas that you cannot settle in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That you cannot mm -hmm. say that, you know, mm -hmm. I'm just going to do this because you just doing this could really end you in ways yes. that you never imagined. Yes. Would you want to say? Uh, yeah. Because, I mean, y'all y'all stirring it up. We're going to be here, y'all. Y'all <laughs> stirring it up. Um, even, as, even as Ruby and Kelly were sharing and then Prophet, as you added on, Psalms 27, um, 13 and 14 is what the Holy Spirit laid on me. And it says, I have fainted unless I had believed mm -hmm. to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. The weapon that we have as single women is our, is our persistence to walk with God. This is what you tell the enemy. I don't mind waiting. Mm. When the enemy knows that we don't mind waiting, look, when a, one, when a month turns into a year and a year turns into two, I don't mind waiting on the Lord. I don't mind waiting on the Lord to get to a place where we're not under man's demand. Mm. We're not under our own emotional time clock, right? If this doesn't happen at this time, it didn't happen when I thought it was going to happen. Like you said, that fear mm -hmm. that drives you to make a decision to where now you're tormented. But I'm waiting on the Lord. Yeah. And there's a peace that I believe the longer you stay connected to the vine you will produce the fruit of that patience. Yes. Amen. You'll produce that fruit of that endurance. And you'll be able to say, look, devil, I don't want to wait. I see what he look like. I saw, I know he got all, all six of the packs there. I get it. <laughs> I don't mind waiting. I know I, I accidentally saw what his credit score is, devil, and I don't mind waiting. <laughs> You know, that's the truth. Like, you have to start talking back to this enemy the same way he talks to you mm -hmm. as the accuser and say, no, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind being here in the bosom of my father, protected, wearing outfits for my sisters. <laughs> and you cute, by the way. <laughs> Seeing all the movies with my sisters. <laughs> but I mean, that's, that's the sacrifice, though. I think yes. that's, that's mm -hmm. the sacrifice of it that, you know, you... You do have to make that commitment that you are going to be okay. And, and yes. I think a lot of women, a lot of women, even men too, they get psyched into this whole thing that, you know, I'm not going to be okay if I'm by myself. No, uh-uh, uh-uh. But I, I heard it recently said that, you know, um, 
parents who have you know the, the preteens and the teenagers and they're getting to that point where they're their bodies are starting to like, oh, oh, you're, you know, they're pinging and going through puberty and they're recognizing, you know, the opposite sex and all of that kind of stuff. And it's like, ah, no, I'm not ready. Don't do this. What am I going to, you know, the angst that parents go through when that happens. But I heard it said that actually that is a God given created ability to desire the, and, and, and develop the longing for love from God. Yeah. I was like, yeah. now that's the first time yeah. I ever that's heard good. some hope yeah. in the concept of, you know, your teenager or your young adult growing into, you know, that, that, you know, hormonal sexual desire, you know, in themselves. And then I equate that also to, you know, being a, a full-grown adult woman and you have the desires because you had some mm -hmm. before. <laughs> so you do know yes, what you're missing. Yes, yes, yes. 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 You never did, but you know it's, 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 you know, it's fully woke. It's fully woke. Woo! Woo! You know, you're not away from love before. Well, yes. love before it's time. It's, you know, it's, it's woke. You know, it's now it got a full it's, voice. Now it has a full Go sleep. With, with bass. <laughs> things that happen when you get into a situation ship or you get into you know an ungodly relationship I don't have to deal with that yeah because there is peace in my house right Action. that's good <laughs> that's good you don't want to you don't want to forfeit your peace yes. for a peace yes. come on yes. Yes. come on yes. Yes. basically yes. it's the kids so for the people in the back yes. we don't want to forfeit our peace for peace right <laughs> transparent in this moment mm -hmm. um, <laughs> all of us you know we we range from you know from you know this in this particular age you know some of us divorced parents all of these different things and we have so many different pers uh, perspectives to give and I'm just grateful to have them from all of you um, that this is you know this is what, what we're, where we are but we are okay with living our lives according to the word of God yes. and we won't Amen. be Amen. deterred from it. Amen. We're not going Amen. to be swayed outside of it. We're, gonna, we're resolute <laughs> um, in not foregoing our peace for peace and <laughs> home. Um, standards, not preferences. Yes, standards, yes. not preferences. Like we Ruby with the, the book okay. according to right. the <laughs> chat. Oh, yeah. 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 Ruby. Yes. <laughs> Um, but thank you again for coming, um, and um, please make sure that you uh, you chat with us. You let us know your thoughts. We love to hear from you. We love to get your thoughts about this, especially if you are a man. We'd love to hear what yeah. you have to say about this. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, email me. Let me know what you think, um, and I can get you in touch with them if I if I if you pass my test. With them. All right. Um, but uh, anyway, I, th thank you for coming and joining us um, for tea time. I need to tell you my tea. Did we fill in here? I had some kids tea. Everybody's right. stuff is gone. <laughs> but as I suspected, I was right out alone. 
So, um, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, we welcome you back next time. Um, enjoy your evening and, and, and enjoy your tea. <laughs> Where we're winding down and wising up thanks to all the hashtags from the <laughs> Have a good night.